thought I'd show you how I make my sourdough bread. This is a recipe that I have worked out over the past uh, three years and if finally I can get consistent results with it every time and so I thought I would share that because um, there's all kinds of recipes in uh, books about sourdough bread, uh, all kinds of recipes on YouTube and this one is is has been customized uh, to work for me and it could also be the, the uh, altitude I'm at. I'm at about a mile high in the Denver area and so I just noticed that a lot of the recipes I would make wouldn't rise correctly or the baking time was off and it none of it just seemed to all be working out until I finally mixed about three or four different recipes and techniques to come up with something that actually works. So I'm going to share that uh, with you today and hopefully it works out for you as well. To make this bread you're going to need bread flour, wheat flour, water, salt, and an activated starter. It's a whole other video to talk about starters and how to keep those going and uh, live with them for the rest of your life. But uh, right now, uh, I'll just assume you know how to make a starter, so you want to use your activated starter. And then um, equipment to have is basically your hands, which is what you're going to be mixing all your uh, dough with, a scale, uh, and then uh, some very useful things. Uh, a bread basket for the final rise, tea towel. To bake the bread in, you're going to want to use a Dutch oven. This is the only way I've found to get consistent results is uh, baking your bread inside of this uh, a Dutch oven like this um, cast iron Dutch oven. Don't use an enamel uh, coated Dutch oven. This will not give you the same results. You'll ruin the finish um, because you, we're baking at pretty high temperatures. So these are mistakes I made early on and thought I'd pass them along to you. So let's start to make this bread. Uh, here's my recipe. I haven't ever converted it into anything more usable, which I will for this video. I'll put the recipe in the YouTube comments. But anyway, uh, what we want to do first is start out with water. So we're going to mix the water and the yeast together and I like to make sure that they're all completely uh, mixed so that when we add the flour it all incorporates a little easier. I don't know if this makes a difference in the whole uh, mixing of the bread. It probably doesn't, but I've just found very useful. So 300 grams of water go into the bowl here. I went a little over, but that's okay in this case. And then we want to use 150 grams of starter. So I'm just going to take it, tear my scale, just start spooning it in and see where that lands. Almost. There we have 150 grams of starter in water, 300 grams of water. So I'm just gonna mix it up a little bit here. All right, I like how that's mixed together. There's still some clumps and lumps here and there, but this is overall uh, good to go here. So now we want 400 grams of bread flour. Okay, and we want to go with 50 grams of whole wheat. And I just like what the whole wheat flour brings to the bread itself. It's not absolutely necessary. You could just do it with the bread flour, but I like the texture that comes out. Okay. Uh, we're not going to add the salt yet. The salt comes after the first. Uh, mixing. So go ahead and just get in there with your fingers and get at mixing your dough around. And you're going to want it to form a very sticky uh, ball of dough. It's not going to feel like regular dough yet and that's totally fine. We're going to have quite a few phases of uh, kneading the dough as we go through this process. So start to mix it around. Just get in there, grab the flour off the sides of the bowl and just really get at getting your hands dirty and mixing this around. And 
starts to come together and it's a very sticky uh, crazy mess here and it's good that's what we want so I just work on this for a couple of minutes just working it around all right and this is actually good for the first for the first rise so what we're gonna do is let this settle right here in the bowl and we're gonna I'm gonna cover it with a tea towel and then in half an hour we're gonna come back add the salt and do another uh, knead it's been a half hour and now we're gonna add the salt to the dough and then continue mixing so I'm gonna get grab my scale here and we're gonna add 10 grams of salt too much. <coughs> Close enough. Now we're going to add the salt to the dough and continue mixing. Again, it can help sometimes to get your hands damp with water and then get in there and just start really getting at it. And already you'll be able to tell that the dough has taken on a softer feeling and is uh, quite pliable. And so work with that, get the salt all incorporated. You can see that it's taking on a smoother appearance and I can feel with my hands the, the grittiness of the salt. So you wanna work your dough until that grittiness feeling uh, is, is pretty much gone. So work this for, you know, just a couple minutes. And I like to get my palm in the middle Brace the back of the dough with my other hand and then pull and then fold down onto there. That's what I like to do. That seems to work for me. Uh, you can do probably whatever works for you. Just keep working it around. Grab any loose wet dough from the sides. You're gonna have dough hardening on the side of the bowl. That's all right. It's not gonna hurt anything. All right, so mix that for a little bit and you've got kind of a smooth, sort of a still very sticky and wet ball. That's completely fine, that's what you want. And now we're ready to start our series of rises. So every half hour, uh, you're gonna come back to this dough and you're going to uh, give it a knead and we're gonna do that six times until it's ready for its final rise. So I'll put this away, cover it with a tea towel, and come back in a half hour. It has been a few hours since we've been doing the kneading every half an hour uh, six times. So if my math is right, that's what, three hours? Yeah, three hours. So uh, now we're gonna do our final knead and then put it in the uh, proving basket for about four to five hours to do its final uh, rise or prove. I actually don't know if I'm using this correctly when I use it, but this is how I do it. So here we go. So our final need. So go ahead and uh, by now it's feeling pretty soft and pretty, pretty pliable. Uh, we want to make sure we're getting all the air out of it at this point. So really give it a good knead. Continue the process of uh, pulling and then tucking as we go around here, pushing the palm of your hand getting all that air out. And I like to still do it in the bowl. You can pull it on the counter 
and uh, do it as well if you wanted to lightly flour the counter. Let's see. <laughs> Just a light flour here. And then just get that all nice and, and beat down so we don't have any big uh, air pockets when we finally bake our bread. So we'll just give that a good work here. And I like to form it into a nice ball and kind of make it tight by folding up underneath. And then we have a nice smooth surface here and we've worked all the air out so I'm going to go ahead and uh, flour the proving basket and drop that in there top down and now that looks all nice that's perfectly in there now that's going to rise and then the reason why we want that nice smooth top down is when we dump it into our Dutch oven uh, it'll be top up at that point so here we go, it's in there, it's all nice and happy. Gonna once again cover, and now I'm just gonna let it sit for about four to five hours, somewhere in there, no, no, uh, no less than four hours. Okay, next we're going to, we're ready to bake. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna preheat our oven to 450 degrees, and you want to preheat the oven with your Dutch oven inside of it. So. I'm just going to pop that in there real fast. All right, and that's going to be ready to go. The oven is now preheated, so I'm going to pull out the Dutch oven here. It's very hot. And now we're going to take a look at our risen dough, and it is perfect. So there's a pretty good bounce to it. It's not over risen. Uh, it's about, I don't know, uh, almost doubled in size. So that's exactly what we want to see. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop it straight into the very hot Dutch oven. Just drop it in there like that. Move it around a bit to get it centered. Give it a quick slice across the top, a nice deep gash. And that is it. Replace the lid. <coughs> and we're gonna put it in the oven with the lid on for 25 minutes. And that is going to allow the steam to build up and form a nice crust. After the 25 minutes is up, I'll remove the lid and then we'll bake it for another 20. Okay. 25 minutes has been up. So we take this out, being very careful with the steam, remove the lid, and if you look there, you can see we've got a nice rise and a wonderful crust starting. It's looking wonderful. So we'll put that back in and let it continue baking for 20 minutes. All right, the time is up. So we're gonna pull out bread. Oh, look at that. Lovely sourdough loaf right there go ahead and we're gonna tip it out of the Dutch oven put it on the cooling rack and there it is just a absolutely gorgeous perfectly baked sourdough loaf so I hope you've enjoyed this uh, little video on how to make sourdough loaf at uh, a mile high up in the sky <laughs> anyway, uh, if you have any questions, put them in the comments, and thanks for watching.